Hello everyone. Welcome to a new video regarding our Cora 48. I am Philippe Gena. I am the owner of PMG Shipyard located in Rayong, Thailand. And I'm here with my production manager, Dean Thompson, which is Australian and also a little bit New Zealand. And we'll talk to you about how to build the boat. During the various videos we have done about our Cora 48, you have been several, uh, several hundred to look at them and thank you very much. Yet, we have been receiving a lot of requests from you asking us the following question. Why is Cora 48 so much lighter when compared to similar boats of the same size? We are talking about six to eight ton, six to eight thousand kilo lighter for the boat of the same size. And we are going to explain you that at PMG Shipyard, we are used to build very light, strong boat. Our background is competition boat, sailing boat, racing boat, and it's why for us the weight is very important. But before starting to talk about the, how to build a boat and why our boats are so strong, because also with your boat, you are able to beach in case of necessity and urgency. Before talking about that, I would like to start from the very beginning, because here at PMG, we are doing the entire process of mold building. And we will be starting to the life of a boat will start with a plug. And before manufacturing the plug, we manufacture a jig. And the jig is made of marine plywood, which we are putting together. Then we are covering this marine plywood frame with a kind of powder and hardener. To make this like baby talc, we are passing that and we are polishing, wet polishing this powder, which become very hard. And then it's become like if it was a uh, fiberglass, but it is not. And from that base, we start to paint and we do our molding. The molding in our shipyard is always done on a different color, black or orange because it allows us to look at and to discover if there is some defect. But now, to go more into the details, I will ask our production manager, Dean Thompson, to come and to explain you carefully, step by step, because you will see it's a very long process to make a mold and then to be able to make the infusion. But thanks to this process, we are able to make boat, like the Cora 48, 48 foot, fully equipped at 16 ton and 700 kilo. So that compared to what you find on the market, we are very light and we are very proud of that. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to give you a bit of a rundown on how we go about to, for the infusion after we receive the mold. Once we receive the mold, we go through a waxing process, usually of about eight to 10 waxes um, to get a, a good quality finish onto the mold. And then from that process, then just before we spray the gel coat, which is the paint that is covered the mold, which is the final color or coating that you see on the Cora cat on the finished product. <coughs> we are, uh, we give it one more wax and then we spray the gel coat within one hour. Um, from after spraying the gel coat, we check the gel coat to make sure the gel coat has a proper full coverage. And we also check the depth of the gel coat um, to make sure that it has an even coverage all over the mold. So after we've sprayed the gel coat in a short period of time, we then do a tire layer, which the tire layer is very important because the tire layer especially below the waterline, also helps with osmosis. It's, it stops the osmosis in the bottom of the hulls. 
Um, we also do the same process in the top sides, just to make sure that we have a, a full protection coat over the whole mold. From that, we usually do three layers. Um, the first is usually just a, like a, a light, light layer, a 30 gram. Then we do two layers of 300 gram CSM. Once we have done this process, we also do a very high QC check, very thoroughly, make sure we don't have any air or any defects in the actual product itself. So once we've finished that, then we start with, this, with the actual layers, which we work with a very good, knowledgeable naval architect for composite, and especially in this case for infusion, which we have very complex lamination drawings. So every project is depending on the layer that we put on, on for that project. And one thing that we are very proud of for the Cora Cat is that the layer that we put on the bottom of the hull is such a strong layer that it can be used for beaching. There's no, there's no chance of um, puncturing the hull because it doesn't have any foam core. But that, that is up to the naval architect, but the Cora Cat has a very good base on the bottom of the hull below the waterline. <coughs> um, so I'd like to take you through some of the products that we use. This is the products that we're going to show you is, is specific for the Cora Cat project itself. Yes, as I was explaining before about the process that we do for making the Cora Cat, um, this is the the finished gel coat paint that I was mentioning before, um, which goes onto the molded surface. These are some of the materials that we use for making the Cora Cat, which in the, at the whole thickness varies. Um, maximum thickness is about 27 mil. Uh, so it does vary depending on the layout that we put into that Pacific area, depending on if it's the, the crash bow or the bottom of the hull and to the sides of the hull. Sides of the hull, we use a, a foam core. Um, this is a specific core for vacuum infusion, specifically designed for vacuum infusion. All the materials that we use for, for doing the Cora hull and all the products that go into the Cora, because the whole boat is vacuum infused. Um, as I was explaining, this is part of the tie layer. This is to stop osmosis, this particular material here, and this material here that we do the hand lamination with a vinyl ester resin. For the rest of the materials, we, we do the layup. Depending on the, on the actual layer that is required, we have some material that is a 0, 090, some material that is a plus and minus 45, and this is a mix of direction. Um, so it all depends on the layers that we're doing and where the, the layer is required. Um, once we've done the layup, we then we call it a stacking, which we put uh, a mesh, a peel ply and a mesh, which under the vacuum, it creates a pressure and it, it gives it a full pressurized at one, about one PSI. Um, so from, from that, then we start the vacuum infusion process, which is a, a vinyl ester infused resin as well. So the whole boat is vinyl ester. This is uh, a process that we do just before we do the vacuum infusion. It's, um, it's very important to make sure that we check that the, the vacuum has no air leaks. If we have any air leak at all, it will affect the vacuum infusion and we will not get a good product and good chances the product have to be thrown away. So this is one of the most important processes that we do just before we start the infusion. As we were talking about before, checking for the vacuum and making sure we don't have any air leaks in the product. And also, especially in the vacuum bag itself and through the hoses and the valves. Uh, we're gonna show you a vacuum on uh, two small hatches. We will not show you vacuum infusion on two small hatches. We will not show you on a, on a hull or a larger product as the, the system that we use here at PMG is unique to us and we do not allow anyone to, to see or to video. So for demonstration purposes, we are gonna show you two small hatches 
that are used on the Cora itself. So I'm just about to start the infusion now. As you can see, the process for doing the infusion is a long process to get it ready, but the actual infusion itself is very, very quick if it is done correctly. As you can see, the, the resin is now flowing. Um, it is flowing evenly away from me and towards me, and also to my left and to my right. We have the vacuum all the way around, so it's pulling the resin in all directions. <laughs> and the idea of having a vacuum infusion product is you get the even amount of resin to fiber foam, what your material that you're using, resin to glass ratio. It is a very, very effective process. As you can see, see now, we are coming to the edge of the, of the foam core because we have a foam core and we have the same material that we use on the bottom of the, the corer, which gives it the strength that it can be beached. Um, I will not mention the name of this product, but we do, we, are, we do have it on the hatch. When it comes to this specific product, it does slow down a bit because it, it does take a little while for the resin to work its way through. Also one process that we do is we, we do calculate the resin to fiber ratio that we should be using. So we don't over mix or under mix the amount that is required. And also for the resin, when we do bring it out of our refrigerated storage area, um, we roll the drum because when the resin comes to us, it has specific chemicals inside that need to be mixed. Uh, we roll the drum so all these products are mixed together. Um, and also when we put the, the required hardener or the catalyst into the resin, we mix it again. Not quite. We're almost finished. No, no. We have almost finished the... There we go. We have used all the resin that is required and the vacuum infusion is finished. Very quick process. Well, thank you very much to Dean, Dean and his team for showing us how we proceed. And um, now I think uh, the construction of Cora 48 has no more secrets and you understand why our boat can be beachable in case of necessity, urgency, and you can go without any worry and trouble because our boats are very strong. It's all for today. I will be seeing you soon with maybe our last video, which is and will be covering, in fact, the layout of the boat because you have been also, many of you have been asking us what are the different layout? We see three bedroom, but can we have four bedroom? And can we do like that and like that? So to answer to your, uh, to your request, we are listening to you and this video will come. As you see, it's time to go now, it's break.